Good evening and welcome to episode 344 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzaman Domwa Kumalo. It's a Monday edition of the Private Property Podcast. If you join us for the first time, welcome to the family. You are tuned in to the only daily property podcast in South Africa, helping you in your property journey and certainly helping you make better property decisions. Uh, and of course, to many of our viewers, whether you're watching us on Facebook, on YouTube, or of course on Instagram, welcome back. You know how we do it. Every single weekday, you and I have an appointment at 7 p.m. where I'm always in conversation with a property expert who helps us navigate our property journey. Doesn't matter where you are on your property journey, whether you're looking to buy, to sell, to build, or you're still a tenant and want to best navigate uh, your tenant journey, this is your one-stop shop on all things relating to property. And talking about all things relating to property, you can, of course, catch amazing shows across private properties, social media platforms every weekdays at 8 p.m. As it is a Monday, you can catch Chad on the Home Shoppers Show, and that comes to your screens every Mondays and Thursdays at 8, Mondays and Fridays rather, uh, at 8 p.m. And every Tuesdays and Thursdays, award-winning farmer Umbali Nogo brings you the Farming Podcast, where she tackles all things agriculture. And on Wednesdays, Esty Klassen brings us the first-time home buyers show, where she's always in conversation with people who not only walked that first-time buying journey, but have gone on to grow their property portfolios from strength to strength. But those are the great shows that you can look forward to every single evening right here on private property at 8 p.m be sure to tune in engage with us especially on our social media platforms if many of you know we are of course running a great competition on our facebook page where you can send a chance of walking away with 500 rands cash every single evening and all you have to do to send a chance of walking away with that cash is to firstly uh, you know engage with the pinned post on our social on our Facebook page uh, where we set a bold uh, goal of reaching 20,000 comments. And if we call your name during the live show right here with myself, Uzamandunga Kumalo, then you have to drop us a message down here below to claim your prize. You have to claim your prize while we are live on air. And if you don't, the money goes into the money bag and rolls over to the following day. That's how you can stand a chance of walking away with cash prizes right here on private property. And of course, we absolutely love hearing from you. So do keep the love coming. Drop those green hearts down here below, especially uh, on Facebook. And of course, share the love with your friends and family across your social media platforms. I can already see some of our top fan gang members. Martha Shivana is watching. Wongani, um, Queen B, Mabunda is watching. Glad Sharinda is watching. Mo, Rose and Zwane is watching Gloria, Mama Boys is watching uh, Tasmin Abdullah, Anelda Everton, Michelle Vomerans, uh, Vanessa Nell. I see you all on Facebook. Uh, so certainly do keep those messages coming on our Facebook page. Now, this evening's conversation is one that I think so many of us, especially first time home buyers who are not very familiar uh, with the home buying journey, the different steps, and really being mindful of what you need to know along along the way. Um, This is a conversation that you're going to find very useful. We're looking at understanding the bond registration process. This thing we'll be looking at, what is it? I think many of us, and and I always share this story because it happened to me who did all her research. Uh, You know, we tend to not know that there's the bond registration uh, process a, what it means, uh, if there are any financial implications, and if there are, typically, you know, what does it amount to, and who 
does the payment and who is the payment made to? And what are some of the do's and don'ts when it comes to the bond registration process that as you know, viewers at home, we need to be mindful of? That's some of what we'll be tackling this evening. And to help us get a better sense of the bond registration process and everything we need to know when it comes to it, I'm joined by Unumbumele Lokum who's a founder and managing director at NS Kulu Incorporated. Nobumila, good evening, and thank you so much for joining us again on the show. Hello, Zama. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, hey, hello to all your viewers. Um, yeah, I'm glad to see that a lot of, uh, of your viewers keep coming back um, onto your podcast. I guess that uh, you are doing something right. So. I'm very happy. No, we, we, we certainly are doing something right. And I think the viewers at home keep asking us for more. And we're definitely uh, going to keep giving them more. And part of the right things that we're doing is helping people better understand uh, you know, their home ownership journey from beginning to end. And I think it's one of those things that we can never tire talking about because there's just so many different components and sometimes situations are slightly different and we really want to uh, empower the viewers at home to be able to make better decisions armed with all the facts uh, and, of course, being able to also negotiate whether it's with attorneys or, you know, the purchase price and all sorts of things. And But, of course, you know, this evening when we're looking at the bond registration process before we even look at the do's and don'ts and you know the the nitty gritties, when we talk about the bond registration process, what exactly are we referring to? Okay, so let's say I'm buying a property from you, Zama, and your property is worth three billion rand. Okay, and I do not have the three million rand in my bank. Not all of us have, you know, those kinds of funds in our bank account. Um, I would then have to um, apply to uh, a, a, a bank um, or find somebody who's willing to borrow me that money um, in order for me to secure your purchase price of 3 million rand. So you would then enter into a mortgage bond, meaning that um, a, a, a certain party gives you funds and um, that creditor will then uh, gain security. Uh, 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 or the security of the purchase price from the property that you will own. Um, very important step to know. Um, you cannot um, enter into a mortgage bond um, for a property that does not belong to you. Um, so the property has to be registered in your name. So that's why if you are wanting to buy a property, you would approach a bank. Uh, normally, you would approach your bank and they would give you funds in order to secure the purchase price and as security for that for that debt um, they will then register mortgage bond in their favor so your question was then what is a mortgage bond and you know how how does it help the bank basically after the bank gives you the funds they need security for the funds that they will actually get the money their money back so um, what the registration of a mortgage bond, what the, the two things typically happen. Number one, um, they give the bank or the creditor, any third party who's been able to uh, lend you this money, um, uh, 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 preference over any other creditor that you may have. So they would they would then have a, a real right to uh, of execution um, or, or a real right uh, uh, to sell your property in order to get their money back. And secondly, I mean, it just restricts um, the data. So being me, who, who, who bought the property uh, with, with, with monies that were borrowed from the bank or from a third party, it restricts me from selling that property uh, without you knowing. Um, mm-hmm. um, so, yeah, basically, it plays, it plays that role. That is potentially what a mortgage bond is. Um, typically, a bank will... Uh, you'll enter into an agreement with the bank uh, for a period of about 20 years. Um, so uh, that, that home loan agreement then is signed um, with, uh, with, with, the, with, the, with the conveyancer, the lawyer that's, that's been instructed by the bank um, before the mortgage bond is registered in the deed of. So let's just take it a step back. Um, how would you even get to that point of registering the mortgage bond in the deeds office in favor of um, the lender, being the bank, or any other third party? 
So from a I see your beautiful property, it's for sale, it's three million rand, and I don't have a million rand, but I know that I can afford, you know, to pay this 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 money off over a period of twenty years or even maybe less. Maybe I don't have it right now, but I'll have it even maybe in five years' time. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I would have paid off the whole debt. Mm-hmm. So, but I don't have it right now, and you are selling it, uh, the property to me right now. So, we then typically enter into a sale agreement, you and I, where um, we both agree that I am buying your property um, for a certain price. And either number one, I'm going to pay you with a certain deposit. Maybe I have a deposit of maybe a it's a ten percent of 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 the three million rand. Or I don't. Um, and yeah, uh, after we've signed that set agreement, I then approach my bank. Um, or also, uh, what will typically happen, and I, I know a lot of people have experienced this and maybe they didn't understand it or they've heard of it, where you've approached an estate agent and, you know, the property is on the, is on the market and the estate agent is advertising it on top of the seller. And, uh, the estate agent then tells you, after you told the estate agent that you don't actually have the cash on hand and you want to, 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 to secure a, a, a mortgage bond, they will then refer you to a, a bond originator. Okay. And a lot, a lot of, of my, my bond clients always ask me, ah, no, you know, I, I, I'm not comfortable using a, a, bond, a, a bond originator. I'm going to have to pay for that or it will increase the, the, the monthly uh, repayment. Uh, that I'm going to have to make to the bank. Very, very important to know you are not going to pay um, that um, mortgage bond originator. The mortgage bond originator is paid for by the bank itself. Okay, so it's a commission mm-hmm. that, the, that the bond originator gets from the bank once they have basically secured the plan for the bank. Um, it basically eliminates a whole lot of marketing for, for the bank. So um, they basically submit your application to maybe up to like nine different banks and whichever bank, you know, gives you the best interest rate um, or the best repayment term, you know, you typically go with them. Um, so I think it's mm-hmm. very important. Mm-hmm. Well, no, I, 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 I want to just, you know, come in and interrupt you there for, for a moment. Of course, to our viewers at home, I want to find out from you, uh, you know, when you started your home ownership journey or during your home ownership journey, did you know about the, the bond registration attorney? Because I think Numbu Milelo has highlighted, uh, you know, so well, the you know, firstly, just what a bond is. And of course, that you'd be working with the conveyancer uh, that would typically be called the bond registration attorney. And as she highlighted, they're the ones who would be, um, you know, they'd get the instruction. They'd be, uh, I would say, hired by the bank or the instruction would be coming from the bank side. They appoint uh, the bond registration. So the bank makes, you know, that appointment so you're not going to say i know who's one by me i want them to be the person handling the bond registration side that would typically be coming from the bank they you know they use attorneys that are part of their panel and there are different kinds of attorneys that are on their panel they depending where you are in in the city where you you know buying they try to actually get you as closest to that part of the world as possible um, so they really do have a wide variety of different um you know firms that they work with when it comes to the bond registration side so i think when we then look at um, the cost factor of this, because I think mean, a lot of first-time home buyers tend to not budget for this. I mean, many viewers at home uh, who watch the show very regularly know the, you know, the story I share about my own home ownership journey when I was a first-time home buyer, and how I had done all my research, read up all sorts of things, and as far as I knew, I knew there was an attorney who handles. Uh, we'll call it the overall transfer because I looked at it as it's, it's one umbrella thing. So I knew I had to budget to pay, you know, lawyers. And unfortunately, at the time, I thought I only had to pay, you know, one lawyer per, per property, uh, not knowing that if your property is going to be bonded, you essentially have to budget for two attorneys, the bond uh, registration attorney and the transfer attorney. And at the time, I was buying two properties at the same time. 
And so the, you know, when the third invoice came and hit me, I was beyond shook. I thought I was being scammed. I honestly thought somebody had cloned my identity or gotten, you know, my details and I'm getting this invoice. Then a fourth invoice comes in. I thought to myself, what is going on? Uh, Because this is now also another attorney. I don't know who these people are. And it really took one of the attorneys, um, you know, sitting down with me and explaining that, well, this is actually what's happening. This is why uh, you're getting a third and a fourth invoice. And I also had to make the payment. So I think a lot of us tend to not budget for this one. Um, And I think I was fortunate that I was able to, to, to cover that bill. But I think not everybody at home will be able to do so. And it's important that then from the onset, we're able to budget accordingly. When we look at the costs associated uh, with the bond registration attorney, what kind of figures are we typically looking at? Because I think people also don't quite have a sense of how they should go about budgeting for for that um, line item. So I'm just going to take a step back on what you said about my initiative. You spoke about um, the fact that the bond attorney, um, the bond registration team is instructed by the bank because um, those attorneys would be on the banks, would be sitting on the bank panel. So the bank will try, you know, uh, well, the bank will facilitate that process and, uh, you know, they'll typically instruct an attorney that is closest to you. Also, very, very important for um, uh, uh, viewers to know that if there is a, a conveyance or a certain attorney that is sitting on that bank that you um, are going to be getting a mortgage bond. It is well within you to speak to your consultant or to the bank, whomever, and say to them, listen, um, I, 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 I've used NS Kulu Inc. before. I'm, I'm very, very happy with using Nompo um for, 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 for my bond, bond registration process. Can you please just check if she's on your panel? Because that is the conventional or bond registration attorney that I would like to work with. Um, you typically find that maybe you would have a certain relationship with that certain uh, uh, attorney. Maybe yeah. you've been using him for a very long time, and you know the the the, the cost. Maybe they'll be a bit more favorable. Maybe they'll give you a nice discount. You know, um. So please always make sure that you inquire with your bank whether a certain attorney, if you would like to use them, is on that panel because it is well within you right to suggest. And uh, just ask the bank to instruct that specific attorney. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So now let's move on to the cost factor as to how much are you going to pay, right? So there are typically three attorneys in in, in a normal uh, uh, conveyancing uh, uh, transfer of, uh, and bond process. Okay. So I'm just going to break it down quickly. So first. It would be okay. So it would be uh, the bond cancellation attorney, but that's paid for by the seller. So you, as the purchaser, you don't have to worry about, about that cost, right? So, and then it would be the transfer attorney. Okay? Transferring attorney is the attorney that uh, has basically been instructed to attend to the transfer, right? Um, of the property. So it's the uh, transfer of the property from you, Zana, to me, because I bought the property from you. Okay. Now, because I did not have the funds and I have gone to the bank, approached the bank to get a mortgage bond, then a third attempt would be constructed being a bond registration attorney. So if I had if I had those those funds um, and I did not approach the bank or any other third party for the mortgage bond, the bond registration attorney wouldn't be in the scheme of things. But now they are. So um, how the bond registration attorney's fees would be uh, calculated, um, their fees are, are based on a tariff. Now, that tariff okay, has been set by the Law Society of South Africa. So depending on how much you are wanting from the bank, okay, um, that will then uh, 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 tell you, or you will then know uh, how much you are going to pay, or more or less how much you're going to pay. So just like your typical transfer fees, your bond fees are also dependent on a tariff. It's not just one set fee. Okay, it'll just depend on uh, 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 what the amount you are looking uh, uh, to borrow is, and that is how much you're going to pay. So you will pay for the bond registration costs, the 
costs um, at the dean's office to register the bond, uh, the electronic instruction fee, fees you'll have to pay for because their training gets constructed by the bank, so it's in system that the banks and their trainees use. So all of those costs you will have to pay for. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I saw that you know, Pumelelo also didn't directly answer it in terms of you know, budget between 5,000 and, and 10,000. And I think the, the reason is, as she was put out, that it isn't a, a blanket answer. There are various line items. Um, and it also does depend on how much you know, the, the bond amount you know, typically is. So this is a cost that you're able to, to negotiate. I know that on Private Property's uh, website, so you can go to www.privateproperty.co.za and I, one of the calculators that you're able to use is around looking at from the, the, the legal side, what kind of costs are you looking at for the transferring side and for the bond registration side? So definitely make use of these free tools. They are there so that you're able to base the budget uh, along your home ownership journey. We're going to go for a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to then be looking at, you know, who we already know that you as the purchaser uh, are, are the one who's going to be making this payment. Who are you making it to? And what are some of the do's and don'ts when it comes to the bond registration attorney. Uh, we're going to go for a quick break and see who the lucky winner is this evening on our uh, daily competition. And I hope they're watching so that they can claim their prize. Let's see who's going to walk away with that. I think it's 1,000 Rand this evening uh, in the money box. We'll see in just a moment. And the winner this evening of the uh, daily cash prize goes to Amaze Mopi. Uh, Amaze Mopi, you are this evening's winner. I hope that you are watching us live. And if you are, then do drop us a message down here below to claim your prize. I think I'm going to wait for my colleague Viola to let me know what amount is in the money box. I don't want to say it's 1,000, but it was actually 500 rands. Yes, it is 1,000 rands that is in the money bag. So Amaze Mopi, if you are watching, watching us then do drop us a text down here below to claim that 1000 rand cash prize and of course this evening we are in conversation uh, with Unumbo Milelo Gulu who is the founder and managing director at Enestulu Incorporated and we're looking at understanding the bond registration process so if you want to avoid the mistake that I made when I started off on my own home ownership journey of not adequately budgeting for the attorney fees. And this is holistically from your transferring attorneys to your bond registration attorneys. This is certainly the episode that you want to make sure you don't want to miss out on. And really just getting a better understanding uh, of what the process entails and who does what. Uh, and of course, what are some of the do's and don'ts when it comes to all things bond registration process. Uh, and Lumpo Manila, I want us to then look at, I mean, we now clear that it's the purchaser who's, you know, who makes this payment. And um, as you were explaining before the break, who are they making it to? Because as I was saying earlier when I was sharing my own uh, you know, mistake in, when I was starting off, was that I, when I got that third invoice and when I got that fourth invoice, you're obviously getting this invoice, you've got the bank details and there's a part of you that is also a bit wary because you're thinking, okay, who are these people? Um, but now, even if you're clear that this is an invoice that that's coming, who are you making the payment to? Are you, you know, say, um, sending the payment directly to the uh, the bond registration attorneys, or is this a payment that you would, you know, put to the transferring attorneys who then uh, pay the bond registration attorneys? Okay, so you make the payment to the bond registration. So the transferring attorney will give you their own invoice for the transfer uh, that they're attending to for you, which you will pay directly to the transferring attorney. You will then get a second invoice from the bond attorneys, the bond registration attorneys, and uh, you will pay those costs directly to them. Um, as we stated earlier, um, that those costs, like you can never give a, a client a, 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 you know, an exact figure of how much they're going to pay because the guideline that is used to determine those costs um, changes almost really, um, you know, so... Um, you need to be cognizant, or you need to be cognizant of the fact that um, it, 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 
changes, the guideline changes all the time. Um, and um, they, you're going to have to make those payments up, up front before the, 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 the transfer and bond are registered in the deeds office. And this is what catches a lot of people off guard because a lot of people think, oh, okay. Yeah, so they're going to register my bond and maybe fall um, in, in, into the bond repayment with the bank or I'll pay it some time after, <laughs> after the, you know, the bond is registered. No, you have to pay it before. So mm-hmm. you're going to have the transferring attorney calling you up like, hey, what's going on? You know, the seller wants to register this, 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 this property and you're like... You know, I, I still I still have bond bond attorney costs to pay for. So like you said before the break, Zana, please, please, please. A, a lot of a lot of a lot of attorneys have have the have, have the convincing uh, cost calculators on their on their website. I have it on mine. Private property has the convincing cost calculators. And what's nice even on, on your private property um website, Zana, I've noticed that even on a, on a sectional property, uh, you guys go even further, you know, um, you, you tell the client what, what they're going to pay more or less for a specific amount. And then you go even further and you tell them, and for levies, you are looking at paying, you know, this amount for levies. Um, and for rates, you're looking at paying more or less this amount so that you know that, okay, over and above the repayment amount that I'm going to be paying to the bank every month, I've also got levies to pay for of this of, of this amount, and I've also got um, and then you think okay, uh, maybe the utilities, the electricity, and water bill probably be uh, around this much. And also, if you're not sure, if you can't find that, I'll just ask your transferring attorney or ask the the, the bond registration attorney because the transferring attorney and the bond registration attorney they work together. Um, you know, ask them. You know, you can make those inquiries. Uh, you know, with the managing agents even like you know um. Ask them how much how much am I looking at, at paying in levies so that so that you know you know you you, you have to know okay so mm-hmm. you'd rather be safe than sorry because when those when those uh, fees are required it's normally at a time when you are very very stressed it's right before the transfer takes place you've lost a whole lot of money um, and now you're thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, what have I done? I did not realize that I would have to pay so much money, like within a space of two months even, or even a month and a half, you know, you've had to, you know, part with the deposit, you've had to part with the transferring costs, you've had to part with the bond can- uh, with the bond registration costs. You know, it's just so much. You've had to part with a rate, uh, a clearance assessment figures, you know, for some municipalities where, the purchaser would have to pay up front, you know. So you end up paying so much money that you didn't even budget for. Um, so just to go into this uh, convention cost calculators, look at what you would pay more or less for that mortgage one and what you would pay more or less um, for that transfer so that you know. Also, another thing that I have to state that I see with a lot of my clients. So if, you, if the purchase price is worth a million rand, right? But you have a deposit of four hundred thousand rand. Make an example. So you then approach the bank for uh, a loan of six hundred thousand rand. Okay, the mortgage bond costs okay are not going to be for a million rand because that is not the amount that is being registered uh, uh, for the mortgage bond. You are going to pay mortgage bond costs on the six hundred thousand rand being the the, the monies that you have borrowed from the bank. So the bank security will be for that 600,000 rand. So they're not going to charge you. Uh, so you're not going to be paying costs uh, uh, that are um, uh, about for an amount above what you have borrowed or uh, mm-hmm. what you have borrowed from the bank or from any other third party. Okay, so when you're looking at the convincing cost calculator, please bear that in mind because a lot of people, shame, they're thinking, sure, you know, and they end up even not even buying a property thinking, yo, I can't afford this, not knowing that. No, you're only paying um, cost, the bond registration costs um, based on the amount that you borrow. Okay, mm-hmm. so and, I think, and I think, you know, the, the, the big thing there then becomes 
uh, also budgeting well ahead of uh, when you make that purchase because as you are rightfully pointing out that there's so many costs and they stack up right and they come uh, at a time more often than not when you're not ready the amounts are such that it's not the kind of money that you would you know have just lying in your bank account unless you are deliberately saving uh, towards it so it becomes very important to be intentional when you set out to buy a property is it one of those things that to wake up one day and say, okay, I want to go sign an offer to purchase uh, and yeah. secure the financing? Um, and, and you really do not want to do that at all. All. I'm going to slip in a comment here from Umen Zibutelezi on our Facebook uh, page saying, geez, the bond registration attorneys add some unnecessary items in the cost. They might as well add money for their shopping spree. <laughs> and Matla Shinyang is saying, ne, you look at some line items and you go like, really? Uh, I mean, look, I, I and I've, I've looked at it from both sides, right? The transferring attorneys and the bond registration attorneys and some of the line items, I think too many of us, uh, we think, oh my word, like why, why is there a postal, you know, amount? Why, why all these small and petty? Exactly. It's like, why? <laughs> we don't really need this. Like we can exclude all of the small and stuff. Uh, but it's the nature of the business, I guess, for a lot of attorneys. Upatu Fanchezo saying it's a lot of money just for registration. And it's, it's something that we need to bear in mind because you don't want to make the mistake of not having adequately budgeted because more often than not, by the time we're getting to bond registration stage it, the, the the matter is so far in that if you then decide to pull out you're still going to have you know financial complications and implications so rather have the money up front uh, that you have saved up for so that you don't find yourself further down the line unable to make some of these payments uh, before i let you go it's running out of time what should we not do because i think we, we've done such a great job with some of what you should be doing what you can look out for what should we not do um during the bond registration process that could potentially jeopardize um you know either us getting the the, the home loan ultimately um or just jeopardize the process in itself Okay, so um, as you mentioned earlier on, is that once you've signed that sale agreement, right, the bank um, then looks at that sale agreement and then they weigh up your credit worthiness and they check your affordability. Um, they'll look at everything, basically, when it comes to your, your assets of, 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 of your assets and liabilities. So you need to make sure that you do not now go out and get more liabilities or, or more fixed things. No loans, okay? No panicking, thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to move into my brand new house. Let me go on a shopping spree. I need a brand new, huge TV and a huge... On credit. Yeah. On credit. Yeah. You do not want to do that. So many clients have found themselves, or my clients have found themselves in that situation and it has not turned out well for them. So please, please, please do not go out um, to get any kind of loan anywhere and or, or go on major shopping sprees on credit. Like you said, Mama, it's the worst thing you could possibly do, to, uh, uh, do for yourself. Do not add on to that expenses list because mm. the bank has granted you that loan based on your assets and liabilities. And if you increase those liabilities, um, you're more likely uh, you know, to not be able to uh, repay the the, the, the the to repay the bank uh, the the money that they that, that they want from you every month in terms of the loan that they give you. So no loans, please. Nothing on credit. Just sit tight and wait for it to uh, wait for your transfer and mortgage bond to register, and then can um, go on a major shopping. Mm. Be careful. Yeah, and, and, and we're going to leave it there this evening, Nompumelela. That was absolutely a great, great insight and also great tips. I think I, I want to echo that last one because I've also heard of far too many instances where somebody's in the middle of a transaction and, as you say, you know, they excitedly sometimes take up credit, whether it's for items that they want to put in the new place or sometimes they hadn't budgeted well and then they want to take an additional line of credit to you know, cover whatever shortfall they find themselves in. And unfortunately, that does... Uh, jeopardize the the your you know getting the home loan so you don't want to put yourself in a difficult position during that process because more often than not when a bank gets wind of it perhaps at the time you had a hundred percent ltv 
and they realize that wait, this person has gone on and taken 100k worth of you know credit and they can come back and review and say nope based on the new availability and the new facts you've got it maxed out that 100k you now we can now only you know extend let's say 80 percent ltv so you really want to be careful of that as much as possible we are going to leave it there this evening thank you so much for joining us on the show thank you so much for having me Zama, and thank you so much to your peers for tuning in and that is Unupumele Lokulu, who's the founder and managing director at Ennis Kulu Incorporated. Wrapping up the Monday edition of the Private Property Podcast with myself, Uzamantunga Kumalo. I don't leave you alone. It's a Monday, so you can catch the the Home Shoppers Show. I nearly said the first time home buyers. So the Home Shoppers Show with Chad at 8 p.m. I'll be back on your screens tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Until then, hope you're staying home and staying safe. <laughs>